We're old now. <laughs> we Excuse work. you? <laughs> You're older than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, podcast done. <laughs> <laughs>
A lot of these lights and headlights have... I, that's the thing, I don't know if I went and took it in to get it, like... Like, inspected and the gas changed if... <laughs> they One day, they're like, oh, the light doesn't work. Which I don't think they would do, but I'm just like... I don't think these light bulbs should be lasting this long. Yeah, I can't remember how long they lasted in my old car, which was a 07 Honda Accord. I do remember... Mm. Mm, I feel like I had to get them replaced once, but I did get into, uh, I put air quotes around car accident because the only real accident that I've been in is I break. Letting the guy get away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I braked because I saw deer running into the road and two of the deer that were full grown deer ran past my car. And then the third deer was a baby deer and it hit my car and tore the bumper off with it because that's how fast the deer was running and my car was stopped. So like. A jerk. <laughs> the poor thing didn't make it though but anyway but that's what i mean like i don't like i don't think car accidents are accidents but like i don't it's not the i still had to report that to the police because it was you know mm -hmm. a car accident <laughs> yeah there's so one of the place where i lived up in upstate new york it's it's funny because when people say redneck i think they immediately think of the south um it's sorry any people from the south listening but hey some people just own it but anyway uh there's a lot of rednecks in new jersey not new jersey well i'm pretty sure there are in new jersey but it's just uh new york like once you get far enough north where pretty much uh this guy my terrible roommate they were talking about that watched friends all the time mm -hmm. when he was in college hit a deer with one of the school vans he goes in to tell people, like, hey, I a deer hit my van and everything, and there was a guy in there. And they're just like, well, what you do with it? And he's like, it's just on the side of the road. Where? And he's like, down there. They ran out of the office, and I think he had to drive out down there shortly after or something. Or it was like later that day, like those people like, two things for telling us. We got it. <laughs> they just, they got the deer off the road, cleaned it, and cooked I don't know what they did with it, but up there, if you hit a deer, you use the deer, I guess. Yeah, like it's, I don't know. It, well, like at that school, it's. I live. If anyone uh, wants to know where it was, like I don't live there now, but it uh, it was real close to Paul Smith's College, where you go there to be one of three things: um, a lumberjack, a, like a like five star chef. Or an environmentalist protection park person. Interesting, the lumberjack and the park uh, service person goes to the same college. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting, but uh, yeah. So uh, that's uh, the they did that, and so it's just really interesting thinking about it. Like now, then I'm like, remember the few people that went through there. And, like, one of the people, because, like, the, the pastor up there always was, like, trying to be, like, oh, there you go, D-Pain. There's a, there's a nice single girl. And I'm like, cool, cool thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, one of them was, I think she was Dominican from, like, New New York City. And it's just, like, her whole personality was just, like, I don't even know why you're going to this school. Because it was, like, she was like, yeah, I'm leaving this school, and I'm going down to be a cop in New Jersey. You said New Jersey, New York, New York City, and I think she did it, but I'm just like... It does seem like a weird path to go. Yeah, I'm like, why'd you even come up to Lumberjack School? <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know, she... I, I remember seeing a picture, because, like, her sister came up and was uh, in... Because her sister was still in, like, high school or something like that. Was She went to the youth group when I was running it. And uh, it was just so funny. Their personalities were so different. <laughs> but that's a totally different story. But yeah, I don't. But then on the other hand, I don't know anything that happened with this <laughs> with people up there. So I'm just like, I'm really bad at keeping up once I move away. But I'm pretty sure that's everybody. Yeah. Or not ev a majority. Yeah, I have the out of sight, out of mind kind of thing where if someone messages me. As long as, like, you know, we were cool, like, yeah, I'll message you back. But otherwise, I kind of just, I just kind of keep doing my thing. I know. She does it to me all the time, guys. I have to message her multiple times. I'll answer them eventually <laughs> in a big batch. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when we're on call. Shh. 
<laughs> Minor details. You said you already knew the answer to that one. I, I know. I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> Gosh. It sounds like you don't trust me, which is the theme of this Better Off Ted episode. No, no. We got to dig more into this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why aren't you getting my emails? <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I never got it. I never read it. I don't want to check the security tapes. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. But yes, this is uh, us going into episode 10 of Better Off 10. Uh, before Whee! we jump into the discussion of the episode, uh, I did not like this one as much as episode 9. This one was fine. It's... I didn't... Like, there was parts that made me laugh and everything. Like, the, like, <laughs> the chuckle. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Who, okay, yeah, it's next episode written, but it's just this one. It wasn't as like I don't know. I don't think it was bad, but it's just like it feels like the majority of Better Off Ted episodes are um like I thought the concept was interesting of like, but it's like okay, she she's got to tell the truth, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it seems like okay, all, this whole show is like well. Ted and Linda, there's the thing that's going to make them argue, but at the end of it, are they still friends, or are they <laughs> just getting closer to smooching? <laughs> and and then, to use some hop terms, uh, if they ain't 2D, who wants to see them smooching? <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that. No, Not but directly. you say, well... I just know you've said multiple times, uh, these 2D boys. Yes. Um... What was I going to say? Oh, uh, the monster game people, they put out their demo for their new game. And lo and behold, smooching is not the main objective. Imagine. So so you're skipping that one? (laughs) (laughs) I did try the demo. It is actually really fun. I think smooching is kind of like a secondary objective that's possible for you to get to. But it's a, instead of being a competitive game, they went with a co-op survival kind of thing. So you're on a road trip and you alternate what choices you make and you want to keep the stats to a point so you can keep the road trip going. So like if you I s- would be interested in playing that. Yeah, cuz instead of you cuz like you have choices like oh, I could spend all the group's money, but then you do get yes. a worse ending because you ruin the road trip for everybody is what they say. But the demo is Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the demo is like four or five locations just to give you a vibe of what the interactions are going to be like. But the writing and stuff still seems good. And there's a lot of callback characters from the other games. All right. So I need to at least play Monster Camp to find out these other characters I missed. Monster Camp I do like, but I feel like it's a little bit more long-winded in the dialogues, which is, like, Mm -hmm. fun if you're hanging out, but very hard if you're doing all the voices for stream. (laughs) Yeah. So... But in either case, back to where we were, uh, away uh, from 2D. Uh, one, oh. uh, the one thing I was just going to say with that is, like, I only know that game was coming out is because uh, a friend of ours in Oklahoma <laughs> put it in my Discord <laughs> to let you know. Oh. She tagged you, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I should probably let Hop know about that. I think and then I forgot. They and then tagged I think she me sent on it. Twitter. Yeah, because then I saw it on Twitter. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that to Hop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like how I can hide from the internet and people still know my tastes. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but yes, so away from 2D, back to 3D. Better off Ted. I rolled my dice. Oh, yeah, I gotta roll mine. I don't know which one I want to roll. Um, let's see. You know what? Let's roll this big heavy one. Big boy. Big boy. What the dump? That's a 20. <laughs> Did it really roll? Because it sounded just like it, like didn't. it slammed. It doesn't. It doesn't roll. That's why I don't like rolling it. Okay. You would have to like hold it with both hands and kind of nudge it, right, to like get yeah. it to roll. Okay, I'm I'm rolling the sky die. If I get another natural twenty, well, that's a two. Okay. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I rolled an eight thanks to the Google Dice Roller because my phone app. Oh, my phone's in the other room, so I don't have my phone app with me. So Let's I guess. See what would Google roll for me? What is that? Just Google Dice Roll. Yeah, I'd look up Dice Roller, and then I think it automatically rolls a d6, but then you can click the little d20 in the little prompt. Oh, it'd probably be good if I went to Google on a different web browser. Uh, 
dice roll it. There it is. Roll me a 20. I'll go with my physical die. (laughs) (laughs) Was it worse or was it better? It was a 10. (laughs) It was both. (laughs) It was worse and better. (laughs) Yes. So in this episode, like we said, the theme of it is trust. And that's what the Viridian commercial kind of like talks about. Uh, more so in terms of like mistakes and what to do when you make mistakes as a company. I thought that ad was funny, only in terms of you know companies have tr- have said that but tried to phrase it differently whenever something bad happens. Not just companies, YouTubers, People, Twitch streamers, personalities, celebrities. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a general theme. So the episode opens up where you find out that the company is uh, has a lawsuit impending. And they're trying to prove whether or not that Viridian was aware that a perfume that they released causes hornets to attack women because something in like the body chemistry like attracts the hornets and then all that stuff. So uh, Veronica is going around telling people what they should and shouldn't say during their depositions for the lawyers mm-hmm. to say like, because uh, in the beginning it opens up where she's like, Ted, tell them that you don't know it could do it. And he was like, well, I didn't know. She's like, perfect. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they kind of well, did, we didn't know. <laughs> yeah. And they do that back and forth. Uh, and then you have, I'm sure there are plenty of people that were interviewed, but of course we only had the main characters. So you have, and this episode kind of really only has kind of like one main storyline and like tiny branches. Like, they're not strong enough that I would call yeah. them their own storylines. But... Yeah, so Ted Ted's interviewed and says he do, he isn't aware of what happened. Veronica goes in and she like says barely anything at all. <laughs> They're like, "Can you describe your job?" Yes. How would you describe mm-hmm. your job? Cleverly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like how Ted gets out of it and he's just like, "Do you have anybody significant in your life that will wear perfume?" No. Just me and my eight-year-old daughter. No. Aww. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, they go, uh, would you give this to your wife? I don't have a wife. Would you give this to your girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. And then the guy whispers, would you give it to a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend? No. <laughs> <laughs> I realized, like, this episode watching this, Ted gets hit on by almost everybody. Like, yeah. The, like, it doesn't matter, like... Uh, if they work there or if they're... Work some... there. Yeah. Yeah gender <laughs> it's, it's like apparently ted is uh, a hot commodity apparently not my type but uh let's see where was i uh and then phil goes in and phil makes a confession not related to anything that they're there for but his confession is that you find out he did not go to mit even though he lied to he lied about it to get into the company and then lied to lem about it to bond with lem mm-hmm then you have Lem, who uh, made himself something to relax himself to the point where he didn't even sound like <laughs> himself at all anymore. Hey there, hey there, cats and kittens. <laughs> or was he says something yeah. like that? And he says something like, he calls her Catwoman at the end of the interview, too. Yeah. yeah. And then... It's like, the, the room is moving and jiving. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have everybody, and it gets to the point where the people interviewing automatically assume Linda is going to say that she didn't know about it, but Linda says that she was aware of it. And then they freak out. So then it turns into a whole thing of how to figure out how to handle this from the company perspective. Because, mm. you know, major lawsuit means money and bad press, etc. Then they go through and you find out that um, they do plea deals with some of the employees to say, if you take the fall, we'll send you to a drug rehab place and give you lots of money. And then nobody, nobody's mad at anybody because it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and they have clips of Dr. Bomba doing it, which I thought were funny. I think he's slowly becoming my second favorite character. He is very self-aware. He knows mm. what he's doing. And then you have uh, the very small branching storyline of Phil and Lem trying to repair their friendship after Lem finding out that Phil lied about his degree. And um, those are the... Oh, and then you have... The way everything gets resolved uh, comes up like you joked about security tapes to prove that um, because Linda says that she sent an email to Ted when she first started working there. Ted swears that he never saw the email and he's telling the truth because uh, security cam footage shows that it got deleted (laughs) Mm -hmm. during uh, his uh, his one office romance he used up through some bonding techniques. Yes. And oh, and we have a timeline now. They said that was six months ago. Yeah. 
I just find it funny how that one event is like just keeps coming up in multiple episodes <laughs> that's the one reoccurring thing it's, it's like the one reoccurring thing is the fact that ted and veronica had his one office affair yeah so uh did you have anything else to add to the synopsis uh not that i can think of i think looking at the questions were pretty good okay <laughs> we'll, we'll got, we got everything <laughs> All right, so then in the beginning, they end up saying that the way that they're repaying people for getting attacked by hornets is to pay for their plastic surgery to get a quote unquote new and pos or a replacement or an improved face. Yeah. Would that be enough for you to not sue a company? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how bad the hornet stuff is. I gotta imagine it's super painful and yeah. not worth just like going under the knife. To be like, granted, I guess some plastic surgeries, depending how much they are, can be in what, like tens of thousands? Well, it depends where you go. Mm -hmm. And I what guess. you're doing. I imagine like, a new face has got to be pretty expensive. I don't know. That's kind of South Korea. That's just a normal thing over there. Like, there's a lot of, like, kind of how we have, <laughs> like, because uh, I remember there was something in there where it's just like, like there's just walk-in plastic surgeries mm. like it because of just the standard of beauty over there mm -hmm. that that's not as talked about as much <laughs> but <laughs> it's like yeah all those uh k-pop stars may not be well natural <laughs> like that <laughs> but that's a different subject but uh but no that's uh but because of that, though, they do have a pretty high level of just, um, I know someone had to go over there for, like, something with their nose. Like, it was just something that was, like, causing a breathing problem or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what it was. I, I, I remember bits and pieces. And they went over there and got got the surgery done there and, and fixed whatever the problem was. So okay. because of their practice with that but anyway um i don't know it's just like i i don't know if i would actually want to get plastic surgery because <laughs> i'm yeah. like i'm, I'm kind of used to my face and like i know it's not i don't look at mine <laughs> you never look in a mirror <laughs> no <laughs> the mirror looks at me well <laughs> and i was like that's right pull in your place <laughs> no but like you kind of get used to it you, you may have like I understand that a lot of people have features they want to change about themselves, but like, we're old now. <laughs> we're, Excuse you. <laughs> you're older than me. Pakista. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <podcast> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be willing to settle for that. I feel like I would get a lot more money suing over the company knowing that hornets would attack me than the plastic surgery would be worth at the end of the day. Cause you, yeah. With all the, because you know you have like. The, the emotional damage and then the physical damage and then the hospital fees that they can pay for. I'm trying to think That's also of, assuming you can afford the lawyer for all of that. It, yeah. Was, yeah, so like I'm just one trying to remember that time, like... Because I'm trying to remember... Because I, I don't remember when... Because I think it was right around this time, or it might have been the early 2000s, when... Uh, uh, pretty much like that's when companies were getting sued because of just like a bunch of common sense things that like people weren't doing which is like i put this coffee in my lap that i so freshly got so that one's got. a real yeah. lawsuit if i know, you know the i know details. it's a real no I know but i mean lawsuit. like she had grounds for it it wasn't just okay i i just as i McDonald's said mcdonald's was overheating their water so that it would stay hotter for longer so they wouldn't have to maintain the coffee pots so mm -hmm. then, even if she were to just drink it at that temperature, she would have had major burns to her. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. But, like, there's other ones where... She just like, so happened to have put it in her lap, and th that burned versus her drinking it and it burning her, like, esophagus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, I felt like... Like, that's the one that always comes up, but I always feel like... I didn't even know it was a woman. <laughs> yeah, I know people so. joke that it's like, oh, lawsuits, like, everyone will do it because someone put coffee on their lap. Yeah, and like... like but it felt like there was a, a few, oh, yeah, and I can't think of any specific ones, but it was like that caused like everything where it's not, maybe not that one, but it was just like all these rules were just like, okay, that 
kind of makes sense, but <laughs> I guess it's time. Yeah, but I mean, like, when you really think about it, like, people have to put up wet floor signs to avoid lawsuits because, you know. Yeah. There's, there's old lot. people. <laughs> yeah. Up there unworking joints and knees but anyway but yeah but pretty much i was just wondering if there was like a lawsuit or something like that they came came around relating to perfume and hornets specifically no 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 <laughs> okay. just like of like boy he's like yeah no we're just paying for new faces oh like, okay no i can't think of anything that would have been yeah but i don't i like, it, yeah, I know it's like, yeah, get used to your face, and it's like, yeah, the Hornet stuff would probably clear up and everything, and you know what, honestly, though, it's just like, I'm pretty sure with nowadays, like, you could write this, and if it's just all you could do and you couldn't get anything, you could, if you got viral, you could make a pretty good GoFundMe. <laughs> it's also true. Crowdfund a new face. All right, so then when it came to... So then in order for you to be able to, you know, sue or anything, they, Viridian has to admit that they knew about it. So that's why they had to do all the depositions. Who do you think out of everyone's uh, did the quote-unquote worst? Because <laughs> they... Ted's wasn't bad. Veronica's was uh, yeah. kind of bad. But Phil, Lem... Ah. <laughs> it, it's between the one of them. Yeah. <laughs> um... So I guess from a business standpoint, Phil's would be worse. But on the other hand, they know Phil isn't lying because he was willing to confess about something else. So yes, Viridian... but it's like, I guess from a business standpoint, where it's just like, wait, you lied to get in here. And it's like, I guess now at that point, like, because... He's been there for 10 years, I think they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, I, I guess, like when I'm looking at it, it's like, okay, well, he said that under oath, uh, he's not lying about this one thing, but then that could open up a case, like that could open up the case into other stuff. Was like, well, you don't know where your employees come from. How can we trust the product that you're putting out uh. if your employees are lying from where they're coming? Like, it's not where that path, the path of the episode went, but it, I could see if it's that, the right kind of lawyers, they would definitely yes. do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like his. Well, just the example that I'm glad that people have stopped talking about the Johnny Depp and uh, Amber Heard case. You're talking there about was, it though. I know, but like just the just in the one example of what we're talking about here, there was I don't I'm not going to specifics, but there was I remember there was something she said that Johnny's lawyers were um, excited for because they couldn't bring evidence to the table on a certain subject unless she yeah. said something. She she brought up the and, past she yeah she brought up a person i don't remember like i remember the specific like not the specifics but i remember the overall details like she said somebody's name that they were not allowed to bring up but because she mentioned it it opened up the door to bring this person in that helped their case or something yeah because like it, it it basically was like uh there's the understanding in the court of law where it's like as far as i understood it where you're not meant to bring uh, previous evidence because it's mm -hmm. not relevant to this, in this moment. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, by her specifically calling out someone from his past, they were like, oh, so we can open it up and bring in witnesses from before your relationship to use as witness statements versus just mm -hmm. being like, we can only use witness statements from these years to these years because mm -hmm. this is what the course, uh, the case is about. So I also wonder if that would be the same case for Phil because Phil is like, they're, they're specifically there to just get information about the Hornet uh, causing, Hornet attack causing perfume. So then I'd mm -hmm. imagine if Phil confessed that, they'd have to be like, well, yeah, Phil. Because that, it would open up a bigger potential case. Yeah, but if, uh, I know there's been other lawsuits where people were confused at the outcome and it's because of the way it's phrased sometimes. So mm -hmm. then, like, maybe Phil's confession can't even be used because if the phrasing is like, we just need to know, did they know about the Hornet stuff mm -hmm. beforehand? And Phil at the end goes, I didn't know about it. Then they that's yeah. all they can technically use. Yeah. And then Lem is also his own. He didn't answer anything. <laughs> he answered the one question at the end, but he was just drugged. Yeah, he seemed mind. very suspicious throughout the whole blitzed. thing. <laughs> 
But yeah, I don't know. It's I guess from I guess from a legal standpoint, I think Phil would probably for me be worse. But from like a whole interview side of it, Lem would be rough because it's like. I don't know. Just it's it's rough trying to get information or have a conversation with someone who's under the influence yeah. <laughs> of anything. Yeah, because I can imagine from the lawyers, they're like, "So can you tell me stuff?" And then he's like, "Groovy," and they're like, "No, can you like?" <laughs> <laughs> I can. Yeah. So it's just like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, before uh, I jump off to anything else. Uh, when I was watching Veronica do the deposition, I was like, I would hate to play any kind of like hidden identity game like Among Us with her. Would you ever do it? <laughs> I don't like playing any hidden identity game already. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's. Uh... I just imagine if you asked her, you'd be like, "Where were you?" She'd be like, "Storage." Be like, "Okay, what were you doing there?" Tasks. Okay, where'd you come from? There. <laughs> but I don't think it would... Like, I mean, she'd either get voted off all the time or people would just be like, we're going to stop talking to you. Exactly. Like, And, and so it's like, it, I think it'd just be annoying for the first early rounds. Mm-hmm. I, however, just knowing what we know from Veronica up to this point, if she loses or gets killed, I think that's more of a, a danger to yourself than actually as soon as she having becomes the killer then she's just like no revenge. just if you're the killer and kill her character i think she would make it her personal vendetta to, to get back to you outside the game mm, that's true she would hold it over your head yeah just like linda and the sharing information with each other mm-hmm oh we can't be friends anymore how about i tell the company <laughs> yeah <laughs> So uh, don't do bonding trips with uh, Veronica then. Imagine an escape room with her. Oh, she'd get so bad. She'd she'd be like, all right, figure it out. And then you'd have 10 minutes left. She's like, why are you guys even hired here? Don't make me fire you for being incompetent in an escape room. (laughs) Or she would break stuff. She probably would. She would lose her mind, yeah. It's because I think she would just get to the point where she's like, fine, I'm just going to do it. And then it's just like... She either solve it really fast or break something. Trying or to force some it. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, yes. Emotionally, yes, absolutely. She force-fed her sister while she was asleep to make sure she was the fat sister. <laughs> she is. She she is her. She's problematic. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I'm uh, speaking of Veronica and stuff. Um did you enjoy the little hair switch they had when they I, had the little blast yeah. in the past? Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was fun. Like I I did like the the thing like the little pat like how like all the little kind of things from the past like of just <laughs> how they met and everything and uh, I was like I was like oh interesting like I, I noticed it and then she's like I like that hair you're no longer allowed to have it that white I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because yeah linda's first day she meets her and veronica has her hair down and early in the episode they make a big deal about how she's trying to be personable so she wears her hair down so i was confused too uh but yeah that was funny um did you also get secondhand embarrassment from the flashback to linda's first day at work no i don't know like i it's hard for me to get secondhand embarrassment in tv sh- from tv shows if I was there, I'd feel real bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because but it, she's uh, testing a new laugh and is like trying three different laughs and hates all of them. Yeah. At the end of it, she's like, you know what I'm doing? I'm trying too hard and I don't know why. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I did like kind of see her that she has was at one time, you know, the excited new employee. And now after actually being there, she's like, this company hates us. They don't like us. <laughs> why do mm-hmm. I give them so much of my energy? And she had a <laughs> nice reason, too, for uh, wanting to work there. She thought they were good people. Mm-hmm. Didn't they help her out? Or was that it? They, she said, like, her grandfather or some other family member uses the, their wheelchair so that he's oh, able to go and up and downstairs. Right. Yeah. And Ted's like, oh, yeah, I told him to add brakes. <laughs> You're joking. You're, you're joking, right? Because, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he said, you should have seen them go down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. 
And it's just like, I think it was like that. <laughs> that was like the start. She's like, what have I gotten myself into? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And then with everything, uh, I kind of mentioned that they kind of try and get Linda to take the plea deal and say that she was on drugs. And that's why she said yes during the deposition. And then while Veronica's explaining it, they show Dr. Bamba has actually had press conferences. Oh, speaking of Dr. Bamba, did you also like when he shouted, uh, <laughs> what was it? I'm incompetent and something oh, else, yeah. but nobody <laughs> notices oh, yeah. me. How oh, was it? It was, I'm incompetent and dishonest, but no one says hello to me. <laughs> because that's when they're like, like a hello person who thinks I'm incompetent in my job. Hello, someone who thinks I'm a liar. <laughs> I am both those things. <laughs> Nobody says hello to me. But yeah, he has his uh, press conference when he goes, uh, it is me. I did it. It was my problem. I was on the drugs. <laughs> well, oh, and he says something and Veronica's uh, like, in the street or something. <laughs> uh, the first, uh, the spoiler, he does it twice. The first one, yeah. he, it's like, he says like he did it with a mouse. And Veronica goes, oh, did it with a mouse. That's a whole new low, guys. Oh, yeah. God, give it up for him going to fix himself. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then did you, uh, and then in the end, you find that they somehow convinced Dr. Bamba to do it a second time. It must be like, it's basically like free vacation on a resort, right? Because they say they're going to send him to the most up-to-date, like, drug care facility. And he's getting bank, apparently. Yeah, there's a lot of money when you come back. And then the company is like, you still have your job because we hired you because you fixed yourself. It's a win-win-win. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, what did they say? They're going to call Linda McPill Popping Pants or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. And I like how Veronica the whole time just says, but even without Linda necessarily agreeing, she's like, oh, shut up, you junkie. And yeah. like, Whoa. <laughs> But, um, yeah, and then he has a second press conference. Did, which of the two speeches did you like better from Dr. Bamba? Oh, I liked them both. <laughs> they're both very good. And I think they were doing a Dr. Seuss thing because, yeah, they do the second one. He was like, I did it in the street with something. <laughs> yeah, it just rhymes. But uh, I think I like the second one because it's like it was kind of hinting at it. And then, like, he wasn't even, like, part of the, like, all the positions and, like, all the interviews and all that. And he's just, like... But he's just there, and he obviously is like, yes, I'm and just like, I'm dishonest and all this other stuff. And it's just like, there he is. He's like, hello. It's me. I, I'm a bad person again. Do you think, do you think the biocomputer is like, I get a break? Maybe, because, yeah, it stressed itself so much out. It got an ulcer when he... Uh, but that, <laughs> they do say that's from working or straight for three years. But you don't know. Maybe Dr. Bomb well, is a stressful guy. I just meant just like... Dr. Bomba seems like someone that would just kind of ramble on and talk if he had the opportunity. Probably, yeah. So the computer's like, okay, why did they give me ears? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, like I said, there is a little bit of a branch in the storyline. So the little branch is where you have Phil and Lem trying to repair their relationship as friends because Lem is initially really hurt because he was like, oh, the only thing like we I thought we had in common is that we went to MIT. And my favorite thing is in the flashback they show like you think it's the seventies, and Lem's like, "Oh, sorry, you had to start work on, during seventies week," and then yeah. um, they're talking, and he's like, "Oh, you also went to MIT," and Phil's like, "Wow, who would have thought I would have run into another MIT graduate in the tech world?" It's like Whoa. let's never talk about this ever again. And Lem's like, "How could I not?" And Phil's like, "Uh," <laughs> and I. <laughs> And they do kind of hint at it at the very beginning of the episode, right? Because they're doing like a rock climbing wall and uh, Phil yeah. is struggling. And Lem's like, did you not do the virtual rock climbing wall at MIT? And Phil's like, oh, it wasn't there when I was there. And Lem was like, well, technically it never was. It was VR. <laughs> yeah. They were only like one year apart. <laughs> yeah. And then I do like uh, Lem's little joke about... He's like, the dorms were great, the guys at the school were great, the one girl in the program was great. <laughs> like, I like how Lem's jokes, they're all very subtle, like, very tiny little hints at things. They're, they're a mm. lot less obvious than, like, the Linda Ted stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, and then, uh, so then my question for you relating to these two scientist buddies, did you ever have, like, a unique language or, like, way of speaking with somebody? Like the way that Phil and Lem use marine biology to circumvent talking about their feelings. 
I don't know. This is very on Poggies. <laughs> what? Poggers. Or po- oh. I know some people say Poggies. I heard but... Pocky. I was like, the oh, snack? No. <laughs> that sounds better than Poggers. <laughs> I, uh, I despise Twitch lingo. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, because I was curious if you had anything like that with your siblings. Because I feel like... I, my siblings are a lot older than me, so sometimes we have, like, inside mm-hmm. jokes, or we'll kind of, like, talk around something or give each other eye contact, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, kids I grew up with, too. I feel like uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about this. I remember me and my friends had a lot of nicknames for people that we wanted to talk about that we didn't want them to know we were talking about them. Hmm. Und- me and my brothers, we really didn't come close until... Like, we were close, but not, like, as close as we are now with, uh, with just current situations. But, uh, I'm trying to think growing up, like, that's the thing, like, the way I'm wired, I'm just like, just tell me what you're trying to say. Just everything straightforward. (laughs) Just, like, just tell me what you want. I don't have time or the desire to figure out the lingo that you're using and all that. Now, I know there's some stuff at, like, work where we'll call certain things, like, at work, it's it's pretty much just high school again. There's so many people, it's like, you're almost, four, or you're, like, in your 40s, and you act like you're still in 10th or 11th grade. Oh, I thought you meant by still in high school. I was, like, the same thing as the clicks from the other episode, where it's like, these are all the guys that are in yeah. the space, these are all <laughs> the guys in the classic no, no, not so much clicks. It, it's just they butt heads and it's just like oh my goodness dudes just just grow up the the generation of uh not talking about your feelings yeah it, it also doesn't help that the one guy that is universally everyone's problem is he has worked that job ever since he got out of high school and mm-hmm. never really had to have other work experience anywhere else mm-hmm. and working with other people and so he feels like he's untouchable Hmm. and then he comes to me <laughs> and then it's just like what do you want <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like i get complained about a lot in the office <laughs> it, it is like that if you don't if you go against the grain at all in terms of like how people talk to each other mm. oh i've i've had the owners which i'm related to both of them come up to me and talk about how i don't I am not upbeat and friendly sounding on the phone to the receptionist. Gross. And I was like, why do I need to make it feel sound like I am faking a friendship with this person I don't even want to talk to? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I, I know the conversation that ended it because, like, like my dad comes up to me and he's just like, you got to stop being so cold to the receptionist. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> in a like, very cold voice <laughs> yeah i'm like and it's just like was well, one of those things i'm like i don't understand what you're saying <laughs> i'm like it's like you just and he's like and then he was like you gotta be like i think he was like you gotta be nice and all this stuff and it's like why i'm not being, like i'm not actively or purposely being mean i just here's the information i need it and it's like well, you want me to have a 10 minute conversation about feelings on the phone? I didn't say, I didn't say that, but it's less like, that's what went through your head. Yeah. I'm like, what, what's like, what do you want? (laughs) So, but like, I guess like a unique language. I see a lot of people, at least when I first was on Twitch and that, that group of friends, they, they have a lot of the Twitch lingo Mm -hmm. that they use, like the poggers and, my brother sometimes say, but I don't think he watches Twitch as much, but it's... It's kind of everywhere now. Yeah. Um, which I, I never got into. Like, I, I don't even understand, like, normal things. Like, I, I have to, like, message Kathy to be like, what does this word mean? <laughs> it is dangerous using Urban Dictionary or any other sites. You never know mm-hmm. what you're going to get back. Like, what was the last thing? I had to ask what the fire emoji meant. I'm like, what does that mean if I send that to somebody? Like, that's fire? That's what I... Yeah, like, I was like, does that mean it's, like, that's hot? Or is it, like, something if you send it to someone, it's just, like, is that, like, hitting on them? Like, I don't know what your pictures mean anymore. <laughs> and then she told me, and I don't remember. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just, like, there's... That's kind of what our friendship was started to build off. Because, like, I would just... When we first met, 
uh, like online, I would just be like, she would just write things on Twitter and was like, what does this word mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't feel like looking it up and you're using it. So, so what does this mean? Cause I know what it means in like the traditional English dictionary, <laughs> but that's not how you're using the word soft. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'll just message people. Please, please explain context and uh, sentence structure so that I may understand the lingo. <laughs> yeah, no, like, uh, it's just like, I don't know. I don't find embarrassment in that. I'll just ask them. Like, it's like, that's the one thing was just how, just language in general, how it constantly progresses in ways that, oh, someone came home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the way language progresses to the part where like what words, what we think they mean, they don't mean everything to the same generation and it's just like i want to make sure that whatever i'm saying i'm communicating well yeah i know yeah like the, the american english is very much a living language like i remember in college i think it was in college when the dictionary decided to add in that the definition of literally is now also figuratively because so many people <laughs> used it, I, my brain literally exploded. It's like, well, it didn't because you're, mm -hmm. you're still here. Um, I think they added John. <laughs> That's that fun. Uh, but uh, I do remember this coming up, actually, in terms of talking with friends. Because I think it's in France. They didn't want to have... Uh, I forget what terminology it is. I think it was streamer. Like, they didn't mm -hmm. want the English word streamer accepted into their language, and they wanted everyone to instead start using, like, the long term of it, which was, like, video entertainer, but in French. And then the, instead of saying, like, a gamer in English, they wanted people to start using the French term of, like, video gaming and stuff like that. Um, so I thought that was interesting that some languages are like, shh, no, 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 stop trying <laughs> to change things, versus the English language where... Uh, I, I still get confused when people say that slaps and I'm like, is that good or bad? And then I hear like cap or fact and I'm like, mm -hmm. no cap. <laughs> yeah, it's not in, uh, it doesn't, John isn't in the Whip, uh, Webster's dictionary, but it, is, it does have its own article in Wikipedia. Okay. For some reason, I thought that was more uh, language around this area. That's why I didn't think it would be in the dictionary. It should be. It'd be funny. <laughs> um, but as far as, like, having a unique language, yeah, like, I think... I don't think me and my friends ever use things to, like, talk about stuff in the way, like, in the show, Phil and Lem used it so that they could talk about their feelings without ever saying, like, you hurt my feelings. They were like, did you see the shark was selfish? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the shark is good at forgiving people. <laughs> and then they do the interpretive dance. <laughs> yeah, and then I like the ending. And that's why the otter is the jester of the sea. And Phil's like, <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I was like, which one of the two of them is the jester then? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> yes. But like, I feel like that's what a lot of TV shows do for like men trying to have emotional, like, like emotional or mental like like fixing of stuff uh, that's it's true. like like i know other sitcoms they'll do it like man my car is like making loud noises today is it okay yeah. <laughs> instead of just saying like you good <laughs> which i feel like most people nowadays do and mm -hmm. let's see this season aired in 2009 so it is pretty peak of um how to feelings yeah and so it yeah, it, I guess, it, and like now is like kind of, I, I would say within the last three to four years, I'll just say five just to be easy, mental health has like seen a therapist and everything has started to become more acceptable in the mainstream. Yeah, I think the pandemic really uh, pushed people to realize it more so because it's like we couldn't distract, at least for me, I couldn't distract myself by being busy. Mm -hmm. I was home a lot of the time versus before I used to at least go to like two or three conventions a year, have like one or two vacations a year, you know, things that you're like, oh, I'm working towards this. So then I'm excited for this. And then, you know, being in your house for two years, being told it's never getting better. You're just like existential dreads really hitting hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I'm, 
like thinking of that just a vacation in general I'm just like hey well I don't know I'm I was like I'm doing something this year I just don't know what and then I'm just like well and now I'm like looking at it, I was like well if I don't go to TwitchCon I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna do because I'm like all right when am I just gonna stay at home <laughs> <laughs> that's like the one downside to like my well, there's probably more, multiple downsides that I'm refusing to th- think about, but it's just like one of them is like it's like okay, like uh, if I don't take like I purposely don't want to take vacation now because it's like I I don't want to go to the well I I I can't afford it right now, mm-hmm. but it's just like going to a convention would be nice and everything, but if that doesn't work out. It's like okay, well I'm gonna take the last two weeks of the year off again and just sit in my apartment. <laughs> just do stuff for and so yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm like going on vacation was really nice but oh, excuse me I, I also realized like vacation just straight up vacation just sitting there doing nothing has the opposite effect on me like it actively stresses me out to not do anything I used to be like that and then I went to therapy <laughs> Yeah, I took a week off of work between, like, kind of, like, I didn't really switch jobs, but I switched, like, who my mm-hmm. employer was, and I took a full week off, and, like, I, I, I didn't do, like, I just, I went to a park and I read, I went to mm-hmm. a cafe, I went to, like, a, a yarn store to get stuff to start a crochet project, like, but I didn't have any plans, and I was, like, I'm, I'm actually resting. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Is this what they call self care? The meme. Is this self care? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the wrong person to ask. And it's just like, oh, that's why I said it's the meme. It was. It wasn't. Yeah. It was a open end. Not open end. Rhetorical. That's the word for it. Theoretical. <laughs> so, but not like even, like I'll I'll be fine doing like nothing for like maybe a day and a half, and then it's just like then everything hits and i'm like hey i need to work on something <laughs> <laughs> i had enough time off and it's not like i feel guilty it's just like i don't like sitting and watching tv and just that's all i do mm-hmm. <laughs> so i don't know it's it's one of those things so that's why i started bringing stuff down to work on and well now i have multiple stuff to work on <laughs> lots of projects too many projects one might say but i like them all (laughs) all right so then back to ted uh were you surprised that so many people in the company turned out to be lying about one thing or another no it it seems like that's what that whole company's built off of (laughs) but even like lem's lie lem i wasn't expecting to be a liar but his was a very tiny like very (laughs) kind of cute yeah (laughs) his glasses and it's just like that fixed the whole relation it's like yeah, his whole thing was uh, the glasses. He's like, yeah, well, now that I came out, I guess I can wear these with the... Uh, and, and no one would think less of me. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> Lem, I think Lem said uh, he wore them to make him look smart. And he's like, Phil, do mm-hmm. you think I look smart without my glasses? And Phil's just like... <laughs> for for audio listeners, Hop just gave a very awkward smile. <laughs> um but no yeah like veronica i assume she has to lie in her job whether she wants to be a liar or not she kind of is like in that position Mm -hmm. ted is a uh he doesn't realize he's like lying but he will bend the truth so that he's like Mm -hmm. not lying in his mind i i think the thing that i found a little bit more interesting was how uh linda is the consciousness of the company she is like i think i've said this before i find her to be the most human but in terms of she she is kind of like the emotional side of people versus Mm -hmm. veronica who's pure logic ted who's trying to be both then phil and lem that are like logic robots yeah (laughs) but logic in terms of science not logic as in Mm -hmm. like business logic yeah, well, like, there's the whole argument with uh, that where uh, Ted is trying to figure this out, and Veronica comes in and is like, why, why do you even care about this? And he's like, she's the only person that hasn't sold herself to the company, and we're about to do that to her. Because he's like, I know I'm not lying, 
and she doesn't think she's lying, which is one of the things like, like couldn't this all have been that? This is the one thing, and then I started going through the paper trail, and I was like, don't they have email histories? Couldn't I, like I know it was deleted off of Phil's computer, but shouldn't it still be in? in well, for my one company, they started automatically deleting emails after like three months because of like the size of the company. And they mm -hmm. said that the servers can't handle more beyond that. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was like the same kind of case because Viridian seems yeah. like massive. Mm -hmm. um, that was the one thing I was just kept wondering. But yeah, I never worked in an office thing, <laughs> like a big office. And mm -hmm. I think I would, I think I would go insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, but no, I just thought it was interesting because Ted says something on the lines of that. And that's when Veronica gives gives the DVD. Yeah, were you surprised she was the one that was the one that helped them? Out? I I was I was surprised. Like I thought that was that was interesting that she was willing to do that for for Linda. Yeah, because it is they see her and Linda. It's like they do and don't get along. Like they could be friends, but. I don't know if Veronica kind of puts up that wall because she, Veronica clearly has feelings for Ted that she, in terms of maybe not romantic feelings, but is still like, if if I want Ted, I want Ted to be available. Mm -hmm. And Veronica is very understanding of like, if Ted and Linda get together, then that's that. Like, I can't have Ted anymore on my own beck and call. Not mm -hmm. that she's really like tried to do anything with him because she did in previous episodes, she's said like, you have feelings for Linda, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to yeah. pressure you on anything anymore. Yeah, like, I feel like Veronica's, like, kind of just, she's like, okay, Ted, if you're going to be part of my life, you're going to be the whole thing. And it's just, like, not, not like, split up. Like, he's like, going to be us in the company. And it just doesn't want, now with uh, Linda coming in, it's just like, well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, like have a competition for your feelings or something. It's like figure it out. Mm -hmm. But says it in her comedy written, <laughs> a little bit crazy roundabout, person. yeah. Way. I did think so. it was funny when he uh, goes when Ted, how Ted doesn't preface Linda with anything when he's like, mm -hmm. I have proof that we're both not lying. And she's like, Why are you showing me this in the middle yes. of a work day? I'm not in the mood, sir. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, 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 I'm going to zoom in. She's like, is that supposed to help me? What am I? <laughs> <laughs> and then it takes her a second to even realize who's in it. And she's like, oh, this is even worse. Why are you making me watch this? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, look at my laptop. Yeah. And then it's just like, man, that's a real good zoom. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't blurry at all. And then he's like, brag. He starts to kind of like brag about it. And Lynn is like, I'm done talking to you. This mm -hmm. is over. <laughs> yeah. There was that. And the oh, there was something. There was nothing else he said. Uh, oh, she's like, yeah, you just must be gay for this company. He's like, well, if that makes me gay for the company, I guess I'm gay. And then the guy's like, oh, huh? he's like, settle down. Yeah. <laughs> the, the lawyer. Yeah, the lawyer who wanted to know if he had a boyfriend. He was like, this is yep. my chance. And it's like, no, <laughs> not for you. <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I, I agree. This episode, like, it was, it wasn't like, like one of the better episodes like but it had like a bunch of like little like <laughs> like little chuckle moments yeah like dr bomba's little moments did steal it and it's like mm. those are pretty memorable the uh, whole linda ted veronica thing is like we've already kind of seen this happen and they've mm. already talked this through the phil lem stuff was fun for me yeah <laughs> Should name this be better off Bomba. Could you imagine that? Oh like, my goodness, <laughs> following him around. It would just be us, like either loving or hating him as a character. I don't think anyone could be neutral on him. It'd either be like he's so mm -hmm. chaotic, he's funny, or he's so chaotic. Why is he at this company? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember all the other episodes at the end. He has. I'm trying to also remember why this. Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why the wiki doesn't have him as a reoccurring character. That is weird, because he is in episode 9, and then he was in episode... Is it 3? Or is it... Mm, which one's the heist episode? Oh, the Mickey Mouse ears one, right? 
Yeah, that, uh... Five. Um, five. Yes. I like that's how... No, 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 it's, uh, episode... Was it highest? Hold on. Yeah, because episode three... Or, you know, yeah, he's in the heist because he does the camera stuff. Because, yes. Yeah, I thought the heist was the one where they were trying to reset the server to get Ted back into. Yeah, his yeah. Job. And that's the same one with the Mickey Mouse ears. Or, no, is that. No, wait, you're right. No, Mickey Mouse ears is six. selling the wrapping paper. Yes. So, six is the like, heist. Because I, yeah. I, I, I see Lem in the, in the jetpack, and they that's when they put the all the. Badges in the. Badges. Bag. and. Yeah, so. At this point, how many times has Veronica like secretly helped keep the comp- keep the group together? There was the heist episode. There's this episode. Let's see. I'm gonna. I just gotta look at all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um. There's the yeah, the heist. This episode. Um. Let's see. She doesn't really do anything with the. She, yeah, it's one of the things where she's like, oh, wait, no, she also, uh, heroes, the way she, uh, gets, like, because pretty much they can't get any work done because Phil is getting a big head because he got the mm, thing, the and that's, yeah, and so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it is interesting that she kind of sneaks in sometimes as, like, the secret protagonist when a lot of the mm-hmm. time you're meant to like go oh she's like being abrasive or she's being harsh to everybody but she has a heart in there you just have to kind of mm-hmm. get past the the bun <laughs> the power hair mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm like I, mean, I am curious though like what season two is like if it's more of this like if it's just the same thing, or as if there's like other stuff, because like I just scrolled down, and they had used the same picture for episode five, or the one where Ted has all the is trying to make friends with all the the older oh, people at the company. It's right. the same picture for episode seven. Oh, that's weird. Um. But uh, yeah, it's like one of those things. I'm like. Does it does this bring closure to this show? Like, or was this one of those things that was supposed to like run to do it? Like, just drag people out? Like, I don't know. It's part of me is curious, but the other part of me is like, I wonder if it's just kind of more of the same thing, where it's just kind of like one off episodes, just dragging it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do remember. I do believe it was canceled after season two. So, uh, yeah. no, I can't remember closure happening, but. Yeah, I think those were all the questions I had about the episode. Did you have anything else in your notes that we didn't go over? Um, I looked over at your notes <laughs> and just realized it's on this on my phone. <laughs> um, oh, the invention, the beginning that they're working on. Uh, it's just when they're like, yeah, some of our inventions are good, some of them are not. Like solar power tracking underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it's like, it's burning. <laughs> Shut it off. Um, we kind of touched on that hairstyle, and that yeah, pretty much everything was close to to what I written. Um, I don't know if if you answered this question. I don't even know if I answered the question I saw on your list. But um, would did we both answer? Would we take the deal? Oh, I think we both said no. Right, that was did the first we? question. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Oh wait wait wait! Not that. No, deal. you you have the one. Oh, in between the Bomba conferences. Okay, sorry. I thought you meant the deal about the new faces. Yeah, no, this one I think was the Linda deal where it's just like, get money and be called uh, as <laughs> one of the nicknames that they have written here in the wiki that Linda gets called Angel Junkie. <laughs> uh, depending on, honestly, if one, I didn't think it could affect my record for being employed anywhere else. And then two, how much money they'd give me for taking the fall. I'd have to know those two things before I agree to it. Mm -hmm. But I also work like in an industry where it's pretty common for people to move jobs every like handful of years. So like I have uh, people I graduated with that haven't spent more than three or four years in the same place. 
So for mm-hmm. me, if me taking this deal means I kind of have like a mark to say like, oh, no one will hire me because on my record it says that I have been addicted to drugs. Yeah. <laughs> then I'd be like, I don't know if I want to be stuck at Viridian forever. <laughs> hmm. I don't think I would. Like, I, I think my conscience would eat me alive. Like, it's just like, because like, no, I'm telling the truth. It's you're lying you're like double lying yeah i'm like no i'm like i know what i did and everything and it's like it would be really really difficult for me to like take that deal Mm -hmm. of something because i'm like because in my head it's like well then what 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 does it matter about anything else i say Mm -hmm. if the company's just gonna like cover it up with money that and like it's like yeah I'm, i'm rich and all that stuff like i i would not be able to live as dr bamba (laughs) <laughs> like where he's just like, yeah, it I'm the drug addict. I cause the problems in the company. <laughs> it's like if I'm gonna cause a problem, I want to actually be the one causing the problem. Like, I, if I there want, is chaos, it is my choice to cause the I, chaos. Exactly. I want to <laughs> like I don't want to be the scapegoat for someone else's thing. But if there's gonna be a problem, I want to make sure that I am the center of the problem because <laughs> I will take. I will take. Um, uh, the whatever it's called, I will take responsibility for my own chaos that I caused for everybody else. But I'm not and taking responsibility for their chaos. Exactly, they did that. <laughs> that was their fault. Yeah, they should have been paying attention. Like, why is Tell us I don't worry about old people butts on his uh, on his desk when uh, we keep seeing the one action that happened six <laughs> months ago? That is very true. But maybe it was his butt, and it just never cleaned up. <laughs> The whole time. <laughs> That's gross. Oh, I, I was also grossed out that Veronica was like, oh, I have to rewatch the tapes to make sure I stay competitive. And Ted's yeah. like, no. <laughs> he's like, you just... And he's just like, I never thought of that. <laughs> uh, and then it's just like, well, Veronica, how... It's like, what... How much uh, are you actually working and how many tapes are there like it's just like do you it reminds me of like the dennis of dennis where he has the whole catalog of everybody that he's t- brought home that, that he's hit on and he just i think they said he has a whole library of like the worst angle that you can ever get where it's in one of the always sunny in philadelphia episodes and i'm like like okay but I didn't really want to hear this. <laughs> uncomfy, <laughs> uncomfy. Because I think I think Charlie like finds it, and he's just like, because uh, he heard that he was with the the coffee coffee girl or whatever her name Cap- is. Oh, okay. And he's just like, where, where is it? <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't like this as much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, that that was pretty much pretty much it. That. Yeah. Because I'm like, man, there's got to be someone out there that does that, where they're just like, yeah, I got to make sure <laughs> that, I, that I'm on, that I'm the best at doing whatever. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to meet that person. Yeah, I don't want to meet that person. It's, well, well, that's a way to end this conversation about the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Like it is getting hot, but it's just because my air conditioner's not on. <laughs> yeah, and also my I had breakfast today, but now I'm hungry again. So now my body oh, is like that. That reminds me, short short story. As I was walking through all these today, I looked over and I was like, ah, mini blueberry muffins. Do I want them? <laughs> hmm. And then I looked at my cart and was like, no, you have enough garbage that you might eat this week. <laughs> oh. I'm glad I don't let myself go grocery shopping hungry anymore because I used to say, oh, I'm hungry. I should go to the grocery so I can get stuff to make for dinner. I didn't mm-hmm. just get stuff for dinner. <laughs> but anyway, yes, if you made it this far, thanks so much for uh, listening. We would appreciate it. Or we appreciate it. And then we would double appreciate it. Any ratings or reviews on your favorite podcast listening service. Uh, triple appreciate if you interact with us at twitter.com slash pointless disco. Uh, especially let us know there if you did leave a review and we missed it so we can give you a proper shout out at the beginning of the episode uh quadruple appreciate if you share us with another person with ears (laughs) 
Or listening capabilities. Yeah, share with a bird. I have ears. Mm-hmm. I said person. I meant to say anything with ears, and then I said yeah. person, and I didn't know well, how to fix that. I guess when I think of ears, I always think of like the external part, but it's like, I guess you don't really need that to listen. Mm-mm. Ear canals. Oh. Yeah. Just like how you don't need a nose to smell. Just holes there. Yeah. Can you imagine if someone without a nose sneezes? It's not directed. It's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shock. A snot. A snot gun. <laughs> yeah anything else you want to say to the listeners before we uh say goodbye um mainly because i still haven't looked up if we need to keep saying this but uh thank you to to hello the song for the opening closing is hello by oh i forgot her name linda luna ray luna ray i was like oh i know it's a an l and there's a ray and i'm pretty (laughs) sure if i open up my uh, folders that will open right over the Zoom call, <laughs> which will make <laughs> editing difficult. But yes, that is who's doing the opening and closing of the song. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah. Bye! <laughs>